Good morning, everybody. Well, today is Friday, November the 20th. And here we are, beautiful Ontario, just outside the community of Collingwood. And today, it's all about the image photography. Hey, Gary here, Gary Clayton Photography. Welcome to my YouTube channel. For the last, you know what, I'm going to say at least two years, there's been a particular barn just a little further up this little kind of gravel country road as it climbs up into the escarpment and the Blue Mountain area. But there's a barn, it's on the right, and I've looked at that and I've thought many times, you know what, I really, really, really want to come back and photograph that particular barn. Well, today we have got so many things that's going on today, it promises to be exciting. But we're going to start off with hiking to and photographing that barn. From there, we're going back to a river, a rapid kind of running river, uh, Silver Creek, which we photographed before. And from there, we're going to continue to the top of the escarpment and photograph the wetland. So, hey, Let's get going. We've got lots to talk about. Lots of new cameras we're trying out today. Oh my goodness. Uh, as I go from my Canon DSLRs into my Fujifilm mirrorless. Now that particular uh, quest continues. Uh, hey, we've got some new cameras today to talk about. Let's get going. Right ahead of me. The barn that I've wanted to focus. Uh, <laughs> that I've wanted to focus. Let's try this one more time. The barn that I've wanted to photograph, the image that I've wanted to capture for a long time with some beautiful grey character in the skies beyond. Hey, I'm set up on the tripod and, and, take a look, take a look. Yep, this is our new to me, used but new to me, Fujifilm X-T2, a professional grade, uh, camera my mirrorless camera this uh just arrived two days ago i bought this from um vancouver british columbia here in canada delighted just absolutely delighted to have this camera i you know what i am just tickled silly i've purchased now actually a three three now Fujifilm mirrorless cameras. Since we spoke the last time, I picked up the ST10 simply because I wanted the lens that came with it, which was the uh, 18 to 55 mil um, uh, Fujifilm lens. So I wanted that lens and I picked up the camera with it, used, but it was a good deal and it was the lens that I wanted. So that camera is for sale now. I also picked up an X-T20. The X-T20 is going to be my backup camera. And of course, my X-T2. My X-T2 is going to be my lead on my number one camera. And I had ordered a new X-T3. But when I got this absolutely amazing deal on this mint as new but used um, X-T2 at a ridiculously low price, I said, you know what, I'm going to cancel the new X-T3 and I'm going to go with the X-T2. I could not, for the difference in the cameras, justify uh, the extra money, an extra thousand dollars Canadian couldn't do it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to be happy as anything with the X-T2. It is a great um, camera and the X-T20 is a very good, excellent mid-range, mid mid-level camera. You know what, my X-T2 is my lead camera, as I've said, my X-T20, my, my backup camera, there's nothing I can't do with this. I've got some new lenses coming. I have the Rokinon 12mm uh, manual lens, and I also have the Fujifilm 55 to 200mm uh, lens. Those have not arrived yet. Don't know much about it yet. <laughs> uh, as a photographer, I'm simply working on controlling the exposure triangle with this particular camera, but hey, we're all set up. We have, what do we have? Well, we have 1 15th of a second, F8. I went with F8 because on all my Canon lenses that I use, F8 to F11 seems to be that sweet spot. And an ISO of 200, automatic focus. Now, it's telling me I'm one stop over. So let's go to, there we go, 1 30th of a second, which my, now my light meter tells me 
is correctly exposed there is my first image guys you've just witnessed the first image i captured with that camera other than sat in my studio playing with the dials and trying to set things up a little bit because it really is retro it's a very retro camera it's got all the little dials on the top take a look at this bad boy just take a look at these dials on the top take a look take a look take a look exposure compensation uh shutter release shutter speed iso focal length and aperture controlled right here on the lens hey all kinds of stuff going on and you know what as i've said i thought he just started to scratch the surface but as a photographer i simply work on controlling the exposure triangle right now and figuring out how you do that with this camera or how i can do it with this camera lots of work you know excited but what we're going to do is let me take in one more shot just the way we did but what my camera tells me is correctly exposed now by controlling shutter speed let's go to one stop over which is now that 15th of a second we knew that from a moment ago let's go to now one stop under 1 60th of a second and let's capture that image wow three images possible hdr one image correctly exposed well what might like me to tell me is correctly exposed one image one stop over one image one stop under magic you know what let's take a look at that magic now <laughs> awesome hey does it get any better than this I don't think so I'm gonna play around a little bit here we've got some really nice sky especially to the left of the barn and directly above it hey okay I'm gonna play around here and then we're gonna move on to our next location oh, it is windy out today by the way <clears throat> um, I do have the uh, microphone muffs on the GoPro today so hopefully that's gonna protect uh, the the audio uh, the sound uh, from that wind anyhow I very much enjoyed shooting the barn I wanted to shoot that barn for a while right behind me there as we head away now and we're heading along uh, this little country gravel road we've got a very steep climb ahead of us uh, but I'm familiar with that um, for my second YouTube channel by the way trail name Jasper my hiking channel I actually come to this area and train a lot for elevation gain um, so I'm familiar very much so with this area anyhow we have about an hour's hike from here to the wetland and then from the wetland we're gonna kind of head uh, east and then um, descend again about halfway back down to the escarpment till the Silver Creek a uh, creek river rapids um, and that's going to be complete the three areas that I'd like to photograph today okay so talking about gear well yes uh, first of all what I would like to say is I am not at all disappointed with the performance of my Canon gear my lenses uh, my DSLRs and so on however I have pretty much sold most of that gear now and then reinvested that money and some more into my Fujifilm mirrorless gear probably oh I don't know was it two years ago I can't remember maybe a year ago it was one or two years ago in November so oh I don't know let's say a year ago I purchased a Fujifilm X-T100 mirrorless camera entry level uh, it came with a 15 to 45 mil electronic zoom kit lens what impressed me right off the bat was uh, the capabilities of an entry-level Fujifilm mirrorless camera I was quite impressed by that little camera also even though I didn't actually like the 15 to 45 mil electronic zoom lens the kit lens that came with it it did impress me on the quality of glass the quality of image that it would give me 
from that entry level camera with that lens. Uh, I didn't like the electronic zoom particularly, um, but you know what? That's just me. Um, great little setup, which I did sell by the way to a, a charming lady who was just getting into photography and she's going to be totally happy with that. Um, and at the time, I was quickly impressed with that camera. I went out and bought the uh, 55, is it? The 55 to 230 mil. Oh, sorry, the 50. Sorry, the 50 to 230 mil and the XC series, uh, which I also sold to that lady. I was very impressed with that particular lens too. But that made me think, you know what? I'm liking Fujifilm. I'm liking what it's giving me. I'm liking what it's doing. Um, I'm liking what it's capable of. I'm going to move forward, which I have done. So as I've said, my backup camera is a Fujifilm X-T20. My primary camera, the one we were just shooting with, is the Fujifilm X-T2. I'm using the today the 18 to 55 mil Fujifilm lens. And on the way is the Rokinon 12 mil manual lens and the Fujifilm 55 to 200 mil XF series lens, which again is a professional lens, probably great for landscape. I've also got to think about my wedding photography and I'm thinking of the 50 to 140 for that uh, but my goodness it's expensive at about 2,000 Canadian dollars hey so we have made the switch we are officially Fujifilm mirrorless camera shooters oh my goodness okay long way to go to get to our next location which is the wetlands so just let's get into it big climb ahead and about an hour to go off we go oh by the way thank you for joining me this morning well the winds have definitely got stronger up here we are at the top of the escarpment now uh, so we're now on the flat just take a look where we're going actually take a little look down here beautiful kind of country road gravel this section of road is no winter maintenance up here so you cannot get up here in the winter time in a, in a car maybe in some kind of a, a jeep type vehicle land rover maybe uh, but in a car pretty much not well definitely not <laughs> the sun is starting to come out you can see the light in the fields blue skies with cloud Earlier this morning when we were photographing the barn it was all grey, which is what we look for. I waited for the right morning or what I thought would be the right morning to photograph that barn and I wanted that grey behind it. I'm not a lover of blue sky, but who is? I'm sure some are. Okay. Whew. Okay. So, yeah, we're doing well this morning. Uh, I feel really positive about the images we've captured so far but again once I get them uh, into Lightroom I'll, I'll take a look and I know there's issues or discussions at the, at the least uh, uh, on YouTube about the X-Trans sensor which I'm shooting in now my Fujifilm uh, cameras and editing in Lightroom I know uh, such photographers, great photographers, such as Thomas Heaton, for instance, he had issues with that. And I'm not sure what he's doing today with Fujifilm and editing those images. Other um, great photographers, Nigel for one. Oh, nose is running, chilly, excuse me. He said, no problems at all uh, editing with Lightroom. So that's gonna be something we're gonna learn about together um, on the XT100, the entry-level Fujifilm I had, that wasn't an issue. That was a Bayer um, sensor. And so, totally different kind of beast when you uh, start shooting with the X-Trans sensor. And this one, I believe in the XT2, I believe it's got the X-Trans uh, 3 version sensor in there. Anyhow, we'll see. Oh, oh nose has started running terribly, but it's just chilly. Plus, I do suffer with allergies, especially this time of year. Apparently, leaf mold, and it gets me every time. By the way, I hope everybody's safe out there. Uh, the bug, the virus. Um, 
I know England has gone back into a full lockdown. I believe here in Ontario anyhow, if not the whole of Canada, but in Ontario, we do need to be in, the lock, in a lockdown, but we're not. We've got some kind of strategic restrictions in certain areas, but that's about it. Well, battery died in my GoPro. Uh, one thing about the GoPro Hero 8 Black does chew up a lot of power. I know, by the way, with the um, Hero 9, um, the battery is larger. The camera is slightly larger, but not much. Um, but apparently it's got a, oh, maybe 25 or 35 percent more power. Um, whoa, wind is strong. Don't know how that's affecting the audio. I hope it's not too much. Okay. You know, up here in the winter time, absolutely stunning. Especially on a morning when there's a foot of fresh fallen snow. Beautiful for photography. We will be spending a lot of time up here uh, this coming winter. Okay. We're getting there. Not too far. Okay, as we approach the wetlands uh, that I was interested in photographing this morning, what I find is because of the high, high winds today, uh, there's enough movement on the water, even though it's sheltered amongst the petrified trees, um, that there's just no real reflection. And the reflection is what I was so looking forward to trying to capture today. So you know what? I'm thinking that today maybe is not the best day. There's some reflection here. Um, but I'm still believing that this is just not the best day to shoot this particular scene. I love it. I love this scene. I love it a lot. Um, but I really, really, really wanted the crisp kind of reflection. So beautiful to look at. Anyhow, okay, you know what? It gives me a reason to come back here. And I love reasons to come back. So we're going to continue. We're going to bypass the wetland today. Uh, from here, we've got about a steady, oh, I'm going to say about an hour. Let's cross this gravel road again. We've got about an hour from here. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to get onto this trail that's pretty rocky and muddy, but uh, the Bruce Trail, that is, uh, heading, taking us into the Silver Creek. It's about an hour from here of hiking. So let's get to that. Let's get that hike done, and let's bypass the wetland for today, and let's go shoot the Silver Creek. Let's keep going. All is well. We are getting closer to the Silver Creek uh, on a nice trail. Just take a look at this trail. I'd like to show you. A little muddy and wet, but the sun is now shining. Uh, you see my shadow on the trail. Interesting, interesting trail. This is all part of what's called the Bruce Trail here in Ontario. Anyhow. So Silver Creek's probably, I don't know, maybe a kilometer from here, three quarters of a kilometer, not sure. And then from there, we have about, about an hour of hiking back to where we parked the car at the bottom of the escarpment. So I did take a, a few handheld shots as I walked down those country roads and trails earlier. A uh, shot of a little woodland scene, nothing exciting, but a shot of a barn. I've wanted to shoot this barn for a long time too, but it's just hard to get a composition. But I grabbed a couple of handheld shots of that. Wow. Weather is gorgeous now. Um, as the sun came up, it actually got really quite mild. Wind is strong. Uh, we're underneath a, Can a Can Environment Canada uh, wind warning, but November is our gale month back when I was doing uh, underwater photography. In fact, that's where photography started to me, was underwater, or for me, was underwater. 
I used to shoot a lot of local wrecks in the Great Lakes. Pretty much all of those wrecks happened in the month of November, in whatever given year it was, and that was due to the gales of November. Uh, because we do get those. Um, yeah, and back in the, the olden days, the schooners coming out of, say, Michigan and so on, would get blown up against the rocks, smashed and sank. Um, and again, always in November, but okay, we are getting closer to the Silver Creek. Um, and that is a location, our final location to photograph today. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, we have arrived at Silver Creek. Isn't it beautiful? Now, if you follow my channel, Gary Clayton Photography, and I appreciate it that you do, um, we have shot this location before. Of course, we've never shot it with the Fujifilm X-T2, but we have shot this location before a couple of times. I think the last time was probably last winter, um, but it could have been the winter before. I just don't recall now. Hey, let us find a composition that seems to work for us, and I think on the far bank it does, but I don't know. We are sheltered somewhat here from the wind, although it is still very windy, uh, but we are sheltered. And it doesn't really matter about the reflections because <laughs> there's no reflections here, not on this river. Wait, let's get set up. And let's see what we can do with this image today. Okay, we're set up on the tripod. We are nice and low at the side of the Silver Creek. The composition as we see it. What a beautiful location, by the way. So let's take a look, see, and see what we're working with right now. So right now I have an eighth of a second at an ISO of 200 and an F11. I'm using film sim simulation at Belvia. There is my first shot. Let's just change slightly the focal length. Let's just bring that in a little bit. Second shot. Let's bring that in a little bit more. third shot and let's bring that in just a little bit more fourth shot awesome now one eighth of a second not too bad at all I have a nice looking histogram but what happens if I want to slow things down just a little bit well first of all the Sun is coming directly are from my left at 90 degrees. That tells me a polarizer, first of all, would give me the maximum reduction in light that it's capable of, which is about two stops, so that's good. Secondly, it will take care of any glare that may be on the water right now, any moisture that's on the rocks, any shiny that's on the rocks from moisture, reflection of sunlight, and so on. So we're gonna start by adding the polarizer and let's see what we can do with that. Stand by. Okay, polarizer is in place, set, set to maximum polarization. It's now giving us one fourth of a second. So we went from one eighth of a second to one fourth of a second. Let's capture that image. Two second timer this time, just because we've showed, slowed the shutter speed down quite a bit. Let us just go to a stop under, or a little more than a stop, but about a stop under. Let us go to about a stop over, a little more than a stop. And let us go back to one fourth of a second, one more shot. Hey, do we need to slow things down anymore? And if we do, how would we do it? Well, in this particular case, we could use an ND filter, of course. And I use Korken. Uh, Z-series ND filters, and I also have a circular um, ND filters. Not variable, I'm not a lover of a variable, circular variable ND filter, but I do like a kit series of circular ND filters. Uh, so each one is fixed. Let's just take a look. Let's just try to slow it, slow it down just a little bit more. Okay, so I have the polarizer attached. Now, I don't have my step-up ring to take me from 
uh, the 58 to the 77 mil, I do have it ordering. In fact, I believe it's going to arrive today. Um, so in the interim, I'm using a series of smaller step-up rings uh, that comes in a kit. It could possibly cause a little bit of vignetting at the wide end, but I don't think so in this case, but we'll see. Okay. Let us see what we can now do. Oh, wow. You can instantly see the change in the image. Okay. Wow. Man, that's a pretty, pretty scene, you know. So now we've added the uh, circular ND filter. Remember, not a variable filter. This is an ND4. It's now giving us one second shutter speed, a two second timer, and there is my image. And you know what? That's probably as slow as I would like to go. But what I would like to do is change my film simulation from Velvia to Astia. Nice shot there. Let's just a little change of the focal length, take it all the way out. Again, film simulation Astia. One more. And one more again. I like to change the focal length of my images because if I don't, then I don't have them. Let's try the Provia Standard. I believe the difference between the uh, Belvia and the Provia Standard is the Belvia is significantly more punchy, more saturated in the colors. However, all these changes can be made, of course, in our editing software, regardless of what we use. Wow. Nothing that. Okay. So, hey, some questions kind of answered in so far as we went all through the focal ranges of this 18 to 55. Let's see if we do get any vignetting at the um, uh, 18 mil uh, focal range due to me using a series of step up, the, uh, step up rings to get my um, connection there or to get the right size of my internal thread of my lens or going from 58 to 77 mil. That's interesting to see. Secondly, we'll be able to compare some of the film simulations, the Belvia, the Artist, the Provia, and so on. See what they look like. Okay, you know what? It has been oh, a fantastic morning. It's very muddy. It's been a fantastic morning. Thoroughly enjoyed myself this morning. Uh, and of course, as always, we're going to sit back, we're going to have that cup of coffee, and we're going to enjoy the images that we've seen today. But thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching my channel. Please like, comment, share. Do subscribe. Click that notification bell. It'll tell you every time I upload a video to my YouTube channel, Gary Clayton Photography. And hey, let's look at those images with that coffee, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.